um, training tonight on this topic uh, led by Lori Cole. You know, super blessed to have such a great team to partner with. Um, Lisa Bloom did such a great um, job last week talking about navigating fear with our top leaders. And um, so tonight we'll be on the topic of grit. And before we get into that, just wanted to go up a couple of things. Uh, first of all, just want to introduce myself. My name is Dee Corchin, and I am glad you're here. You are on the team time uh, call, the weekly call for Coaches Up for Change. And um, a lot of us here, I want you to know, I see you, glad you're here, whether you've been coaching for a day, a week, years, you are welcome here, and uh, this is where we grow and we learn together. So we've got great calls. Monday night is your coach night. Um, Optavia has revised their schedule, so we do everything on Mondays. So just a reminder, at 8 o'clock, we've got the client community call, and then at 8.30, the coach community call. The client call is going to be by Dr. J.C. Dornick, who is at the top of his game fitness level, and also Casey Mitzel, who is a nutritionist, a CrossFit owner. Um, they are going to be talking about exercise and tips for optimizing the plan. It is up to us to invite and notify our clients of these calls. Okay, this was a change, but they're not getting text or anything from Optavia because these are uh, coach-led calls. So I will stream it into um, Coaches Out for, or into Eat, Live, and Be Healthy, but just want to give you the heads up to be inviting, especially your new clients to these. And, um, and then the second call is going to be on, very similar to what we're talking about tonight on grid, it's going to be on uh, the habit number three on embracing growth and the obstacle is the way. And Dr. J.C. Dorn again and, and Jamil Frazier, who was always a great facilitator. So uh, worth the listen to stay on. And then I just want to remind you, we are really lucky, you guys. We have Dan Bell, right? Top dog to Dr. A, who offers a call for us. Um, us, we're on his team, and he offers a coach every Monday or call every Monday night, um, just to us, the coaches in his organization. Um, and this is more of a, a community call where you get to share um, if you want to ask a question, that sort of thing, or just drop in and listen. So, really invite you to that. I'm going to drop a link in the comments that there is a for those Monday night eight and eight thirty calls. There is a Facebook group. Uh, it's a page and you actually like the page. It's called Optimal Health Community Time. You or your clients and your clients can like that page and then they can go right there if they want the call each night or even better to get the replay if they've missed it. It's just an easy access. Along the same lines, the new app, the Habits of Health app is being released to our clients. It starts tomorrow and they are sending emails. They're doing it in batches. So between Tuesday and next Monday. So please don't like post in our client group about it because the reason they're staggering it is they want to stagger how many people log in. They want to be able to identify and correct any fixes or bugs along the way. So you might during your call mention it to your clients that it's coming to be on the lookout for their email, but that's going to be exciting. Um, and then convention, y'all, it's a week from Thursday is convention. And I want to remind you, we have like hundred something of us who are attending live, but the virtual option is for everyone who cannot be there live. It is for you something that if you want to help more people, if you want to grow your business, you definitely want to be a part of. And even if you can't attend virtually during the live event, um, those recordings are available to you until August 31st. So you register there at OptaviaEvents.com. Highly encourage you to talk to your coach about that. And then just lastly, we have a, um, a local event in Atlanta on Saturday, August 28th. I want you to go ahead and save the date. If you're in Atlanta or the Southeast region, save the date to attend that. Uh, we are going to release the flyer and registration right when we get back from convention. And I want to just give you a yes in the comments if you would like this idea. Um, I'm thinking about two things, but I'm thinking about hosting a um, business of coaching, um, exploring coaching uh, webinar just for like our team and your guests, your clients, um, maybe the first week or two after convention. Um, if that's something that you think would be helpful for you and your clients to be able to introduce people to, um, maybe hear some stories of our coaches, um, let me know about that. And then when I was thinking about that, I thought if you want me to do one, you know, to coordinate one for our team with some of the other leaders on the program itself, we could do that or even possibly combine the two. So I'm seeing lots of yeses. Okay, fantastic. All right. Well, we are um, going to talk about an incredibly important topic 
tonight, um, the topic of grit. And I'll tell you what, I don't really know anybody with more grit on our team. Well, I know a few people, but one of the top, <laughs> top dogs of grit is integrated national director, Lori Cole. Um, this girl uh, has grit and grace. She knows how to uh, work it hard, but also do it in a way that empowers and lifts others. So Lori, I'm gonna turn it over to you tonight and your team. Awesome, thanks so much. Hey guys, um, it's so nice to, we just want an honor to sit here. And I have to tell you, when Dee asked me that um, we were gonna, she mentioned that we'd be teaching about grit. Um, boy, have the people I have asked to be on this call with me and myself been through grit this week. It just seems like it was a, a step up um, in what we were teaching about. Um, the first thing we were talking about when I kind of came together with um, some coaches, I asked just for their opinion. I was like, what do you think about grit? And once we get got past the Southern term for what grits are, we kind of are able to define it. So I wanted to, um, if you're from the South, you totally get me right now, but I wanted to kind of give you um, some notes that, that these coaches said. They said grit was similar to tenacity. Um, we found this um, awesome quote. It says grit is more than stamina, is more, more about stamina than intensity. Grit isn't just about working hard. Real expertise and figuring out really hard problems takes longer than people imagine. Grit is about working on something you care about so much that you stay loyal to it. Isn't that great, you guys? So when we were chatting about this, I was meeting with some coaches and um, this panel just rose to the top. Um, I'm gonna be asking them questions. I, I saw lots of feedback on the, the way things were done last week. So we're gonna be doing a similar feedback. I'm gonna ask them a question and then they're gonna respond. So um, our the panel tonight is Whitney Miller. She's gonna go first. Lori Schiffman will be second. Missy, you're gonna be third. And then I'll just kind of sum it up and move us on to the next question. So when we were thinking about kind of the evolution of how we all became coaches, the first part was we had a story. So the first question for my panel is this, how long have you been a coach? And how have you had to have grit or tenacity in your personal health journey? So Whitney, if you'll take just a second and answer that, and then we'll move to Lori, Missy, and then I'll move back and circle it back around. All right, Whitney, we're ready. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Lori. So my name is Whitney Miller. Um, I've been a coach for coming up on three years now in November. Uh, my personal health journey, I lost about 65 pounds uh, in 2018, 2019. And really for grit for my personal health journey actually is going on right now. Uh, the most recent experience for me is that I lost almost 65 pounds. And over the last 18 months, I have gained 30 of it back. And it has taken me this long, 18 months, to officially say, okay, that's it. Five more pounds here, five more pounds there. I'm still in a healthy BMI, all of that. Um, so for my personal health journey right now, it's not really easy to admit that. Um, it's not really something that you want to shout from the rooftops as a health coach. But you know what? You don't fail unless you stop. And I'm not stopping. And quite frankly, it's really freeing to acknowledge that, to own that truth, to own that story, and to recruit the help of my coach and support of my family in getting back down to where I prefer to be. There's my personal health grit at the moment. Four pounds down this week, week one of the challenge, y'all. It works. Whoop. Thanks, Lori. All right, Lori, you're up next, girl. Well, I completely uh, missed out on the first half of what was said. Can you repeat your question? Because I, <clears throat> I don't know what happened to the Zoom, but I was gone. I could see y'all, but I couldn't hear anything. Okay. It's how long have you been a coach and how have you had to use grit in your personal health journey? Oh boy. Um, so I've been a coach since August of 2020 and, um, wow, you know, it's a journey for sure. And, uh, it's never just smooth sailing. Um, I, 
I had several challenges just getting started. I mean, um, I immediately got started in May and then my daughter graduated from the Naval Academy. She got engaged. She, we planned a wedding in eight days during COVID. And I mean, those were all great things, but they were stressful for sure. And, um, but I was really, truly committed to um, really determined to stick to the commitment that I had just made. There were a lot of things being thrown at me and a lot of temptations all around me. And so really it was um, for me personally, it was just a real time of growth. I've said yes to everyone in my life forever about everything and kind of join in to, you know, keep everybody happy. And for me, it was a learning process for me was just learning that saying no is an acceptable answer. Um, I'm used to saying yes to everything, but right now I'm having to say no. Um, that, um, you know, to people around me who are wondering why I'm not engaging in celebrating and doing things the way that we've all been accustomed to doing them. And so um, just uh, being true to, you know, going back to being loyal, just trying to be loyal to myself and, um, and staying focused on, just truly staying focused on where I wanted to be. Yeah, good job. Thanks, Lori. Uh, Missy, you're up next, girl. How long have you been a coach and how have you had to have grit in your personal health journey? Um, I've been a coach for a, almost a year. I guess in the beginning of August, it'll be a year. Um, grit would probably be because when I very first started, I... I worked really hard towards the fuelings, the waters. I did all that, but the lean green was an issue for me. And my excuse was always, well, my husband's not on the plan. I cook for him when he comes home. And, and so finally I had to have a mental change and that came from my coach. She really um, gave me a talk and I made a decision at that point that I really need to make my goal my health and be have a passion for that. And that's what I did. I lost 30 pounds and um, got my husband on as my first client when I became a coach. And I've just been pushing forward since. Great job. Thanks, Missy. So we all start with a health journey. And so then the second part is we decided to step into coaching. So my next question for this panel is, and you guys, um, for, for my panel, I'm going to kind of combine our second question and our third one and our fourth one together. So in building your coaching business, what strategies or grit did you need? And also the second part is in acquiring new coaches, how did you need grit? How did you have tenacity? What can you share with our team tonight? Whitney, go ahead. Okay, first of all, my notes were not ready for that impromptu change, just so you know. So <laughs> when we're talking about uh, this question, the very first thing that came to mind, and honestly, I hadn't yet watched the video that you sent me, Lori, but without even watching that, it was learn to live with disappointment. And I know that that sounds incredibly bleak and awful, um, but it's true. You're going to lose clients. You're going to want their goals more than they do. Your front line may tank. It may tank more than once. Um, people are going to say no, and that's okay. Um, you just have to learn to live with that and get through that, get past that. You know, early on, it's really easy to, oh, I lost one and freak out about it. But you really just, it's just part of it. The more people you talk to, the more no's you're going to get, the more yeses you're going to get. And as you do that and you learn to deal with that disappointment and focus on, okay, well, who's next? You know, this is, this is not where I'm supposed to be right now. What's over here? Who's next? Where am I supposed to be right now? Um, and for the second part of that with growing coaches, that one's, that one's special to me because I was really, really bad about uh, offering coaching early on. It intimidated me. It made me nervous. And guess what? I'm still not good at it now because of it. So the fact of the matter, though, is you just have to do it. It's weird and it's awkward and you may not be good at it, but you know what? I'm weird and awkward all the time anyway. So what else is new? You just have to do it. Um, it gets easier to talk about it as you do. They all say early and often bring it up in the health assessment, bring it up often. And my very favorite thing is those tips calls because Lori's way better at it than I am. And it helps. Thank you. Lori, how about you? How, do, how have you had to have grit in your coaching business and also in, in finding your uh, coaches and potential coaches and talking about that? 
So I echo quite a bit of what Whitney said. Um, I think for me, you know, I get I, the people that I have looked to to introduce this to are people who I felt like would really understand what coaching is and that also have that grit type personality. And um, the coaches that I currently have are people all that are very special to me. And I see so much potential in who they are and know what they're capable of doing. And, um, you know, sometimes these co some of your coaches are going to just jump in there and go. And then others think they're going to jump in and go and then they don't. And so I've just really learned to accept that for those coaches who you see so much potential in, but you're trying to help them see it in themselves. That's something they just have to really do for themselves and understanding that I need to understand, they need to understand why are they saying yes to coaching, develop the why for coaching, just like we do for our own personal health journey and keeping that at the forefront. Um, from, you know, when there's those obstacles in the way that are that are difficult. But again, it is about just understanding that and recognizing that, you know, not everyone wants to hit the ground running the way that I'd like to see them or I know, you know, coaching offers so many wonderful things and so many benefits and they're obviously talented or I would not have you know, approach them about coaching, but just being okay, understanding everyone's going to, you know, uh, work at their own pace and being okay with that. And when they do decide they don't want to do it or it's not for them, that's okay. Um, and just like Whitney said, you just have to take the nose and go. And there's always somebody out there around the corner who is looking for opportunity and wanting chances to help other people. So great. Thank you, Lori. All right, Missy, how about you? How have you had to have grit in your coaching business and also in your talking to potential coaches? Well, um, it's real hard for me to approach people um, that haven't approached me first about the, the plan. Um, so I have to really work on making posts and social media. Those, that thing is, is something that I really strive hard to do. Um, and I think I'm, I'm developing some grit from that. As far as coaches, I do not have any coaches under me at this time, but I do have people that are my clients that I really push to see that they have that potential. I try to help them understand that they have done everything right. I mean, they are digging in their books. They're making progress. They've lost lots of weight and I try to build them up so that they understand that that's all they need to do in order to be a coach. They, they've already done it for themselves that um, I just lead them, but they're the actual one that did the work. And um, so I have a couple that I'm, I'm trying to direct into the coaching um, aspect and we just keep working on it. That's it. Okay. So great. And, you know, if I could share just from my heart here for a second, you know, we lead by example. Um, as far as building my business goes, I mean, there have been a lot of peaks and there have been a lot of valleys. And if I could just offer you just a lean into your mentorship, um, lead from the future, sit with your mentor coach and just keep dreaming. Um, network with other coaches, listen to your trainings, um, listen to convention. Um, as far as uh, finding coaches for my group, I always listen for just nuggets of something that might be a good coaching place to start. And then I'm like, hey, that sounds like a good coach. Do you want to explore doing your tips calls? Um, the last thing I do is I start boosting my client's confidence by just a post. So I'll say, would you be willing to post and tag me or post on the page? And a lot of times it's just the little nudge that they need to get more confidence in building your business. So our last two questions that the panel and I came up with is, um, the first one is when times are tough, how do you have grit? And, um, this is not just about shipping and this is not just about feelings, but this is also about when you have a personal crisis, how do you have grit? How do you still do the coaching with the personal crisis? And so as we're thinking about this, this is grit in the tough times. Excuse me. It's thundering like crazy. I hope, I hope is my internet still okay? All right. 
um, Alabama does everything bigger. We have bigger spiders, we have bigger storms, the whole bit. So if you're thunder, there you go. So Whitney, I'm gonna start with you. If you'll talk about grit in the tough times and then we'll go to Lori. Yeah, so uh, Lori knows this really well. Um, two of the biggest personal crises I've had in my adult life have happened since I started coaching, one professional, one personal. And Lori honestly was the first person I called after my family and my coworkers since I had to take care of work when these things happened. And she was teaching at the time, so I left her a really terrible voicemail. I was like crying, losing my mind. Everything's okay now. Um, but when I spoke with her that afternoon, instantly she said, I, I've talked to Dee, I've talked to Shauna, what do you need? And, and that just so beautifully shows you what Optivia is. And, and even if I maybe didn't have the grid, I'm gonna be really honest, I made my own client calls that day. I liked the distraction. I'm very much a things get tough, focus on fixing. So for me, I have to focus more on not being a hero coach than getting through tough times. Um, but when I do kind of lose my mind or get crazy, because we all know that happens to all of us, I call Lori. And she helps center me and balance me and bring me back down to reality. And okay, well, what's next? Because sometimes it is, okay, what's the next right decision? What's the next choice? Um, so when I have those issues, I go to my mentorship, like Lori talked about, and help kind of level back out. Um, and then the last question, um, did you ask the last question? You didn't ask the last question yet. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> All right, Lori, how do you get have grit through the tough times, sister? Well, you know, I know your phone's ringing off the hook because Whitney hangs up with you and I'm the next one in line. So here I come. But, uh, you know, it's very much the same thing. I mean, I do lean into to you, to, to my coach, Lori. And and I think one of the for me, the most one, uh, an important action uh, here is just remembering that you know, we may have once been a client, uh, we are a client, but we always will be um, just like we step into coaching. But remember that um, we're not just going to coach, but we need to continue to be coached ourselves. And um, so I had a situation, well, I've, I've had several things also, um, very difficult times. And as of just recently, my dad is not doing well, and I had to go to Texas and whew, I'm sorry, had to deal with um, some face to face things um, that were very, very hard for me and um, things that have been uh, struggles of a lifetime. And now that, you know, my dad's his age and we're looking basically at end of life. Um, I had to I'm trying to make peace with some things of the past. And that's always a hard thing. And um, I had some things really slap me upside the head while I was in Texas. And um, there were temptations all around me. And um, man, I was ready to just I mean, there was bags of Snickers everywhere because he's diabetic or he's uh, for his hypoglycemia uh, and uh, you know, having to keep sugar around because of his insulin and dropping and all kinds of health issues. And there were Snickers and ice cream. And um, man, I could have really gone off the rails and I was ready to, but I got my wits about me and I called Lori and we had a really amazing conversation and she just helped me get through that. And then it's okay. You know, you kind of get centered again and, um, you know, it, it, you go, you know, you, we keep hearing about this. Why, why, our, why, our, why sometimes you think, gosh, we just run that word into the ground, but buddy, I mean, that is the center of my universe. That is where I have to come back to. It's like, why am I doing this? Why am I happy now? How did I get here? Um, and hey, Lori, I'm is gonna all... to... hey, Lori, I'm going to have oh, to come I'm sorry. Here, sis. Yeah. I got to give Dee just a second, but good job. And show them your Show them your paws, Lori. Show them your this week. <laughs> we've had double surgery. So we've had some grit going on. And Missy, real quick, if you can just um, tell us about your grit in the tough times, and then we're going to land on a really great note here. Uh, mine would have to be from uh, just building my confidence by I have my coach and her coach. Um, I call Chris and Shauna. I text them constantly about things that if I have doubts on how I'm handling this situation or 
a different way to address something because I find that as I build knowledge, I build confidence. And as I get that confidence, then I feel stronger and I get braver. And that's how I build my grit. And so I'm constantly messaging them or texting them and just saying, when one of you has a chance, could somebody give me an answer on this? Or what do I do? And luckily I haven't had any clients run out of fueling. So that's gone so smooth compared to what other people have gone through. But when I did have a, pay, have a client that was kind of fearful she was going to, they were right there. They gave me plans to give her information. It just, it went very smooth. So, so okay. that's how I build my grit. Yeah, thank you. Well, we're almost out of time, you guys. Um, I want to challenge you. Um, so, you know, personal crises happen. Things are hard. Shipping is a challenge. We sit with our clients in it. We offer solutions. We talk to our mentorship. We talk to coach support for answers. We listen to trainings, all those things. So imagine that we're in a hard time, but what do we do when things are not? How do we have grit in the happy times? And you guys, here's the thing. We are swinging back up. I'm seeing things get shipped out so much quicker now. It's so encouraging. But one of the things I want to encourage you, if I could just give you a voice in those last couple of minutes here, is that um, it's easy to get complacent when things are going really, really well. And I just want to encourage you that that too is when you need grit. Because if you have a stutter in your business, you just take your foot off the gas for a second. It's a three month in three months, you'll be in another valley because you'll be like, what happened? So um, I encourage you that even in the in the harder times and also in the good times that you find that grit get into fast track to freedom, keep posting, do all of your trainings, um, have the discipline to keep in with your social media at your capacity of what you can do. Um, don't get complacent in the good times because we've seen a shift up and things are improving and we know that, but we also want to not sit still and sit pretty in it. I want to just leave you, I'm going to uh, turn it back over to Dee, um, but you guys, if you learned one thing tonight or heard just a tip about, about some grit from these, um, this panel, could you just pop it in the comments? I would love for you to just blow it up for their tra transparency and vulnerability, but I want to leave you with just one thought before I turn it over to Dee. In your day, in, are you bringing the mentality of being a victim or a victor? What energy are you breathe, bringing into your day? Because this is where your grit comes in. Just the determination to do hard things and not to Pollyanna attitude everything or gloss over the fact that shipping has been challenging, but just to sit with your clients and be determined to be in your life book and grow and lean into your mentorship. So um, anyway, I hope that their vulnerability has been a blessing to you and um and thanks for the love, man. You guys are blowing it up. Hey, I'm going to turn it back over to Dee at this time, but thanks for, um, thanks for the honor of sitting in front of you and um, sharing some of our harder times and um, hopefully you glean some things from it. So thanks, Dee. Thank you, Lori and um, Missy and Whitney and Lori. Excellent job. Excellent. I mean, I think that it's important for us. I mean, you know, that real important to me is vulnerability and transparency and because it's the real deal, right? We got to talk about the real stuff because otherwise we can sit there back thinking, well, la -di da everybody else is having a great time and I'm struggling over here. So um, I have been alongside some of our top leaders going through the toughest times in their personal lives ever. And um, we do rally together as a team. You know, we do. And with something like this, it can be easy to put this on the shelf when things get hard, right? When things get hard or things get complicated, we can put it on the shelf because there's no time clock. We don't have to do it. And that's why I think what Lori said at the beginning that, you know, being so clear on your why and why did you become a coach and what do you want from this? Having that clear vision 
and the stamina versus intensity. This isn't pedal to the metal all the time, but it's just staying consistent and the emotional navigation of it. So um, I am so grateful to everybody who is on this call. I love all the positive feedback. We've got a stellar call on navigating disappointments next week, led by Sean and Frank. So you don't want to miss it. Um, let's hop on over to the, um, the next calls. You can find the links. It's pinned to the announcements in Coaches Opt for Change. So see you next week, guys. Thanks so much.